Thank you for joining us today and welcome to this webinar, Simplifying IEC 61850 Engineering and Troubleshooting. I'm pleased to introduce our speaker, Mr. Sterin Jos. Sterin is an AVP for grid automation and is responsible for leading development and features of Calcitex AAC tools, products. He has extensive experience in the design and development of grid communication protocols, including IEC 61850, DNP3, and ICCP. The presentation will be approximately 45 minutes and questions will be answered at the end. Attendees are invited to submit questions to Steren using the chat box on your screen. Should we not have time to address all these questions, Steren will follow up with you individually after the webinar. So without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Steren. Steren, over to you. Uh, thanks, Shreyas, for the introduction. Um, so uh, I have uh, shared a slide uh, to uh, give an overview of the uh, demo we are going to uh, have today. So in this uh, uh, demo, we are primarily trying to cover the highlights of AC6150 suite of uh, tools. Uh, it has got a CL manager as the first component, then we have server, and finally the client. Uh, during this demo, I will try to focus on certain use cases uh, to simulate the data, uh, to configure the system, uh, to monitor and perform some controls. And if uh, time permits, we can also see the goose exchanges and report exchanges. Um, so, so yeah, these are the uh, points I would like to cover during this demo. If you look at the SEL manager functions, uh, I will show you uh, how IEDs are uh, populated in the tool, how communication addressing are configured. And further, we will also see the logical nodes and data sets view in SEL manager tool. Um, and we will use uh, multiple IED configuration. So uh, you will be able to see how multiple IEDs are handled in the tool. We will also see the goose addressing and reports addressing. Uh, and finally, the signal mapping. Uh, signal mapping is the primary function uh, if you look at from a data exchanging perspective. So we will try to spend more time there and uh, cover some of the uh, uh, aspects of uh, signal exchanging there. Uh, finally, we will see the export of configuration from the tool. Going to the server function, uh, we are trying to uh, simulate multiple IEDs during our demo. So. Uh, we will have certain prerequisites like uh, we will have multiple IP addresses added to the same PC's network card. Uh, further, we will uh, uh, see how simulation of SEL files are handled within the tool. We will also see a simulation function. There are multiple type of simulation functions supported in the tool. Uh, we will see manual simulation of data. Uh, plus, we will see automatic automatic simulation of data. And there is also a conditional simulation where we can uh, write uh, scripts and uh, manipulate the data. So uh, the scripting, we will try to uh, keep it minimal, uh, uh, but uh, we will focus more on the other simulations. On the client side, we will have add IED feature. Uh, we will have uh, uh, the IEDs loaded into the client system through a CL file. We will browse uh, the IED tree and also uh, see the QCWatch feature uh, so that uh, you can view the data points very easily in the client tool. Further, we will see the data monitoring functionality and history of those data points. Uh, we will also extend our demo to Goose monitoring and history, uh, further to the report enabling monitoring and history, and finally the controls. So this yeah, time is short. We will have to uh, uh, do a bit, uh, go a bit faster uh, during this demo. But I will try to cover all these aspects. Before jumping into the demo, I would like to explain the demo use case. Uh, so we are trying to simulate uh, and uh, run three IEDs in our simulation environment. Um, and in the first one, we are trying to bring up the protection functions. So this IED will essentially have a measurement uh, logical nodes, which will simulate the measurement data changes. 
and uh, and based on the changes in the frequency we will try to uh, trigger a fault or detect a fault in the protection device further it will send out uh, a trip signal to the switch gear ied so this is that that will be the second ied in the simulation environment which will receive the um, switch gear uh, you know data data trip so once the switch gear receives the trip in the form of goose message, it will change the status of the uh, switch gear. And there is also a reclosure relay, which will trigger a reclosure goose to the switch gear. So these three devices, we will try to simulate in our simulation environment. And we will see how goose exchanges are performed and how uh, these will cause uh, data changes in other places. And to have this uh, demo setup, uh, I have set up a laptop with the 6150 server. It has got three alias IPs. Uh, these are the alias IPs uh, as you see on the screen. Uh, 1.91, that is the protection device. 1.92 is the uh, switch gear function and 93 is the reclosure function and we will try to uh, run client from a separate laptop we will we will be switching screens during the demo uh, and we will try to keep it minimal because it might cause some delays uh, at your side while switching the screen so um, at a minimum we will uh, switch uh, screens two times or three times so this is the uh, demo setup now before you know let us go to the demo so first i will bring up the scl manager tool as you can see on the left hand side uh, it has got a ied uh, list so you will be able to add ieds using different options you may create a new ied it will be used by the manufacturers to define new uh, ICD files for their devices. There is also a IED database function from where you could import the files. So, uh, so there is a built-in database. Customers can import ICD files into this database and uh, use it for uh, later. There is also a import from file system option where uh, a that uh, ICD file can be imported directly from the folder, from the from a local folder. So these are the options. I have already added a few uh, devices here. So first one is the protection device, uh, and here we have you are seeing the simulation, sorry, communication details of the protection device. You can see that the IP address is 1.91. And we also have a trip goose originating from this device. So the respective addressing is also uh, highlighted below under goose communication details. So all the high level communication uh, parameters are visible from this tab for the specific IED. Further, I will browse to the logical nodes in of this IED. For this demo, we have a measurement logical node and it has got frequency, phase voltage and current. We will focus on frequency during this demo uh, for the simulation purposes. Based on the uh, measurement, this is a measurement function and we simulate a condition where the IED keep on monitoring the measurement changes and based on that it will trigger a trip signal to the switch gear. So this uh, trip signal will be simulated from the PTRC. It is a trip conditioning logical node. Uh, we will trigger the trip under this TR uh, data object. And we also have a subscriber GGIO. Uh, it will be used to subscribe circuit breaker position from the switch gear. So 
we uh, we have simulated a functionality to receive goes back from the switch gear so that means uh, the goes will be sent out from the ptrc by this protection device and further it will be received to the switch gear and when switch gear send back a signal back to the uh, protection device that can be received in this sub, uh, subscriber ggio uh, there would be different ways uh, to handle this uh, subscribed data in different IEDs. Uh, for the simulation purpose, I have uh, uh, brought up this subscriber GGIO because it will make the things easier to view uh, during the demo. Then we have data sets. First data set is a trip signal. It will have PTRC and PDIS, which is a distance protection function. Uh, so these parameters are included in the first data set. And in the second data set, we have a few metering data points where we have frequency, phase voltage, and current. We will be focusing more on frequency during this demo. Then we also have GO signal. So as I mentioned earlier, the data set, the trip data set will be sent out as a goose packet. And you could see that uh, this goose is actually going to two remote devices. Uh, the trip signal, the trip goose is going to the switch gear and also it is going to the client. So that's how it is configured right now. Uh, so using this mechanism, you will know which all destination IEDs are receiving the receiving a specific goose signal. Now browsing to the report, there are two reports configured. Both reports will be subscribed by the client. Browsing to the switch gear functionality, we have similar communication addressing and we also have circuit breaker functionality here. For the control purpose, we have a few data points which will explain the control functionality so that we can simulate control function during this demo. We also have these uh, control models set to different uh, parameters. So we will be mostly performing control on the circuit breaker position. So direct with normal security is the simplest form of uh, control. We shall use this uh, during the demo. Further, we will have circuit breaker position uh, providing the current status of the circuit breaker. We can see that uh, in detail. Here we have a subscriber uh, GGIO, which is a generic input output uh, logical node. We will use two signals, indication one and indication two. Uh, to receive trip signal and uh, reclosure signal from the other IEDs. Breaker status will be published by the switch gear. And same information is sent out through Goose. And Goose is received in both protection and reclosure IEDs. So the use case, as you, if you remember the use case, protection ID will send out the goose and switch gear uh, circuit breaker position will be sent out by the switch gear. So the switch gear status need to be subscribed by both protection device and the reclosure device. Client being a monitoring function, it will simply receive the data without taking any further actions. We also have provisions to configure the Goose network addressing, MAC address, multicast MAC address, application ID, VLAN priority, etc., can be configured using this option. Again, we have the breaker status going out as a report. It can be subscribed by the client device. We also have a reclosure device. It, ha it also has got a reclosure logical node to send out the operation. Here we here also we have a subscriber GGIO to receive the circuit breaker status. Mm -hmm. 
data set of uh, reclosure device has got uh, this operation close and auto reclosure status further we have the go signals going out from the reclosure to the switch gear and client and finally the report going out from uh, this device to the client to indicate the presence of a client, we have a dedicated uh, IED. Client is also an IED. It will have certain logical nodes. In this case, this is, is a this is just a uh, client with a UI. It doesn't have any archiving functions. So IHMI is the logical node indicated here. And if you see the signal <laughs> mapping. So there is an option to view the signal mapping between the devices. So this will give you a summary of all the signals exchanged in the system. In a bigger system, this uh, metrics will be bigger. But in this case, we have only uh, four devices, one being a client. And here you can see the metrics from PTRC to the client, PTRC to the switch gear, and further the switch gear to the client and switch gear to protection and reclosure devices, et cetera. So this will give you a summary of all the signal exchanges happening in the system. You could also filter out goose report, et cetera, to easily find out the destination and source of the signals. You could also view user use filtered view of data. There are different options to filter out the signals. These options can be used for that purpose. Once the configuration is done, you could export the SCL file. There are different options provided. You could uh, actually restrict the export of the contents by using certain features here. For example, if you want only to export the uh, data exchanges between the protection device and other IEDs, you could select this option, auto select dependent IEDs. And if you select protection device, it will automatically identify the signal exchanges between this protection device and other IEDs and select them. And similarly, if you want to see only the signal exchanges between reclosure, it will automatically do that. So this feature will be handy to make uh, an export with a subset of IEDs. There is also an option to change the target schema. Some IED tools may not accept all the schema. So there is an option to change the schema and perform the export. These are some handy features which will be uh, useful for you. There is also a compare IED model feature where the, the IEDs can be compared once it is imported to the tool. So it will give the compatibility uh, between these IEDs. So if you want to compare between two manufacturer IEDs uh, from a service perspective, from 6150 feature perspective, uh, it's possible to do that. So I'll uh, switch to the uh, live demo at this point. Uh, so with this, I am winding up the SEL manager part. Now I will switch to the other function server. So to give an overview again, so this uh, server will have three alias IPs. It will have uh, the protection function loaded into it, plus the switch gear function and the reclosure function. And client will be uh, simulated in the same laptop which I am using right now. So, so idea is to uh, have three alias IPs 
and run three servers at the same time in the uh, in the demo. So that is the uh, that's the idea. Now I have switched to the server. Hope you are able to see my screen uh, with the other tool. It is the IED Smart tool. I will quickly go through the IEDs here. It, these are the same IEDs which were shown in the SEL Manager tool. It has got a protection device with certain logical nodes, which I have explained earlier. It also has got the reclosure device and switch gear. And to quickly show you the IP address details, I have configured a set of Elias IPs in this uh, laptop. And we will be using 91, 92, and 93 for the demonstration purposes. So these Alias IPs are assigned to uh, the same devices which I have mentioned earlier. The 91 is assigned to protection, 92 to the uh, reclosure, sorry, 92 to the switch gear, and 93 to the uh, reclosure. These IEDs are already up and running. And, <clears throat> and as I mentioned earlier, there are certain simulation functions available in the in this device. So if you browse to a certain tag, first I will show you how simulation of data point is handled. First we will see the manual simulation option. If you import the SEL file, the tool will behave as if it is a IED, real IED from a communication perspective. And you will be able to change the data points as you need. And further, uh, you can make the data changes manually. If you make, if I make any data change manually here, that will be given to the client through MMS services. And if the same data point is configured as goose, that will be uh, sent out as a goose signal. We will see that during the demo anyway. So this is the manual simulation option an option I mentioned. And there is an option to add the data points to the local watch window. Local watch window is something uh, which you see when you select this IED. So it doesn't have a uh, global scope. We also have a global watch window where we can monitor multiple data points. <clears throat> So if you look at this carefully, you could see the data points from all the three IEDs listed here. And protection, the, the frequency is the last one here. Right now, the value is 62. It is slightly a odd value. Uh, I have kept it uh, intentionally to uh, generate some abnormal conditions. We have a conditional uh, simulation uh, based on this abnormal value. So that's the that's why value is slightly off the range. So this metering based on this metering value based on this frequency uh, signal, trip signal will be triggered. And this trip signal will go out from the protection IED to the other IEDs in the network. And this IED Smart can subscribe to the local uh, Ethernet port. So it will be able to populate the data from the remote IEDs using Goose subscription. So once the trip signal is gone out, the same signal will be received by the switch gear. And this is the subscriber GGIO indication one. So indication one will be used to receive the trip signal from the protection device. Further, 
based on the changes in the circuit breaker circuit breaker status will be sent out and same will be subscribed by other two devices for example the reclosure device and protection device can subscribe to the circuit breaker status and further we also have the reclosure de device sending out the reclosure signal and that will be received in the switch gear as required so this uh, completes the loop uh, of the demo which we uh, planned so now since the goose uh, or the ieds are already running uh, we could make a data change for first year first we will see the simulation of the signal i will take you through that simple simulation option which i was mentioning about earlier so in this option you you could enter the values using comma separated values so these comma separated values will be applied based on a time interval it could be made cyclic or you could apply it for a certain number of iterations so all these features are available right now i have set a configuration of 5 second interval so that we can see uh, it happening uh, in a, at a slower pace as i explain uh, during the demo so this frequency signal is uh, ranged between 58 and 62 you could see that it is starting from 60 then 61 62 etc along with that we are also simulating the uh, phase a voltage and phase a current uh, we won't be focusing on those parameters during this demo uh, but we will be more focusing on uh, the frequency uh, the point i would like to bring up here is that uh, we could make multiple uh, data point changes in the same simulation file it will be applied uh, as it is required and another point is that uh, the number of values entered into this uh field need not be exactly the same for example for the first value you could enter more than five values and for the second or third parameters you could have a different number for example uh, two or three values simulated so there is no restriction on number of values to be entered here so i'll quickly run this simulation this is a comma separated simulation option you could manually start it or you could start also during the startup so i have manually started it for the demonstration purpose so you could see that uh, the frequency is changing <clears throat> it is changing as per the configuration in the simulation file right now it is switching between you know in the switching in the range of 58 to 62 so this is the uh, automatic simulation option i mentioned other than the manual simulation last option we have is the scripting interface it is not for normal usage this is used only if you would like to perform a conditional simulation in this uh, particular script i am trying to read the frequency value so there are certain apis available for you uh, to read the values from the uh, running system again i am also reading the ptrc current value and the condition is kept in such a way that uh, if the frequency value is greater than 61 or frequency value is less than 59 then we identify that the frequency is out of range and tripping so this is a very this may not be a very valid use case but uh, similar functions can be used uh, to uh, trigger a actual protection condition and also you know send out a goose signal based on that so these are the possible use cases uh, we could extend this scripting function to any level and generate any type of data changes in the system 
and this script will run in every five second 5000 uh, is uh, in milliseconds so it will run in every five seconds so this trip is essentially switching the trip conditioning signal between one and zero based on the condition it detects it's a very simple script uh, but as i told earlier it could be extended to any level as you need so i will run the script and if you see the there are certain print statements available if you see the trace so there is a trace statement available you will be able to see these two traces uh, as the system detects these signal conditions so i'll run this manually you could start it uh, you could start it during the startup that is also fine but for this demo i am trying it manually so now you could see that uh, the frequency is returned to normal that's the first condition is triggered and now it is tripping now as you see here the signal is 61 as it crosses the 61 to 62 uh, the trip signal will be invoked automatically and you could see that here and this trip signal is sent out to the other device So this is a switchgear device. It is subscribing for the PTRC trip conditioning signal. And as you see the signal changes under the PTRC, it is getting reflected in the subscriber uh, device also. So this is one way of you know, monitoring signals between two devices. As we run these scripts, uh, we could also generate manual data simulation uh, so right now to avoid further data changes i will stop the stop the script so that uh, we could manually change some data and see the results so we, what we were seeing was a trip signal going out to the switch gear and if the breaker position changes let us see how the other devices will respond. So what we are expecting to see is these values should reflect the switch gear status because these values are subscribed in these devices. So let us make the change manually. You could see that uh, these two signals were changed immediately. Uh, as I changed the, the circuit breaker position because uh, it is actually subscribed uh, into this other IEDs. So these all are um, views internally provided uh, within the simulator. So you could see, uh, so we can see the same um, information from the client perspective. So let us see uh, how we do that from a client. So if time permits, we can come back to the simulator and uh, uh, see some more operations. But considering the time, I would like to switch the control to the client. So hope you are able to see the client view client can be configured uh, in two ways first being the scl file loading you could load the scl file here uh, browse the scl file and it will list down all the ieds available in the uh, in the configuration an advantage of uh, having a test client is that if you select the test client, it will automatically identify which other IEDs are sending data to the test client. So it will automatically select other IEDs, you know, sending signals. So that will be a handy feature if you want to 
uh, configure and uh, use this client for, to communicate with the selected devices. So I have already configured these devices here. Now I will select these devices to communicate with the remote device. I will select uh, three devices. So first one is the protection device and second one is the switch gear and third one is the three closure. So these, <clears throat> I have added a few data points here to view the signals easily. So these signals will be polled by default. If you add any signals to this point list, it will be polled frequently and corresponding information will be visible here. So 91 is the protection device, 92 is the switch gear device and 93 is the reclosure device. So you have uh, logical grouping of data also available here. Uh, we have data sets. You also have buffered reports. If, if the devices have unbuffered report, that also will be visible here. You also have goose control blocks available here. So since it is a, uh, this client can subscribe goose sig signals, this could be used as a monitoring uh, test client. And it will not interfere with uh, the GU signals uh, between IEDs because it is just uh, working as a monitoring function. So going back to the same simulation, um, we have the MMXU data changing frequently because the simulation is still running there. The data will be changed in every five seconds. So you are seeing the history of values. So there is a feature to get the history of data changes. If you click on a specific data point, it will give you the history automatically. You, you could see that uh, uh, all values changed for this frequency is listed down. Similarly for other signals, if there is any value changes, uh, you could see that as well. Same applicable for the circuit breaker status and reclosure status. Now we will switch to the report monitoring function as well as goose monitoring function. So these are the two other areas we would like to see. So for the report monitoring function, we will select these reports to the report tab and we will disable the polling. So the first column that you see in the point list here it is to poll the data. If you disable this feature, the polling functionality will be stopped and further the client will have to rely on other source of information. For example, we could see the goose first. And you could have you could run goose reports and polling at the same time. There is no restriction on that. So now we will switch to the yeah. Before jumping into the goose function, I would like to show you the quick watch feature in the so here. In this mechanism, we are trying to fetch the value below and show it to the user. So, so instead of adding to the point list, there is an option to uh, read the values and see the current value below. So, so essentially it will try to pull the data and you know read it and display the information. So these are some handy features if you want to quickly see 
uh, a particular data point. Now going back to the goes functionality, we have a goes tab here. Once the client is started with the configuration, it will start listening on the network. And it will, you could see further below in the goose pane that uh, three goose signals are already being captured by the client tool. If you want to monitor a specific goose that could be added to the goose tab and those go signals will be monitored. So further, if there is any change happening in the system, the goose will be displayed accordingly. So now I will trigger a circuit breaker goose. I will trigger a position change for the circuit breaker so that it send out a new goose signal. I have send the goose signal and you could see that uh, the information is sent out now if you keep the mouse on top of the data points it will display the current status of the values and you could see that uh, the circuit breaker position has been changed to open now I will go to the simulator and cause one more data change. In this case, the circuit breaker is closed. So this way you could see the history of Goose and also see the values captured by the client or the other IEDs by looking at this data point view. So advantage is that you could see the history in a smoother fashion and uh, see the data transactions easily. This could be exported into a CSV file for the later uh, analysis if required. I will demonstrate that feature shortly. I will also simulate other Go signals, for example, trip goose in the simulator and you could see that uh, this goose is also coming to the tool. Finally, I will simulate the reclosure goose. So this way you can monitor a set of goose signals. You could also reorder them the way you need. For example, if you want to see the protection first and you know reclosure second and etc you could do that here you could re reorder the signals and now as you receive the goose signals you could see that uh, this history part is updated automatically so in this case ptrc so if you click on the ptrc signal if you see the rightmost column below it is showing the source of data so right now we were using only the goose communication for the data retrieval. So we are seeing the respective data changes. So if I make a change here, the respective data point will be highlighted. So that way if somebody want to monitor a set of data points uh, that could be done very easily using this tool. Uh, it will keep on monitoring the signals and it will also highlight those changes to the user. So I will change the circuit breaker status so that it will indicate. If you click on a specific data point, it will show the history. Also, it will show the source of data retrieval, including quality and timestamp. So three timestamps are shown here. Read timestamp is updated whenever the tool read the data. Goose timestamp is updated whenever it receives a goose signal. In this case, measurement data is not transmitted through goose. That's why you are not seeing a goose timestamp there. Now going to the reporting function. 
we could monitor reports also in the same way for that the report need to be enabled so i'll enable all reports in these devices this is a protection device i'm going to enable the report here we will skip the integrity function for the time being and these are the data points available so we'll enable the report and we could also add those reports to the monitoring so as the reports are received the corresponding entries will be highlighted so in this specific case it is uh, simulating the data the metering data is simulated and because of that reports are generated frequently so 59 58 so likewise you could see the data points under a specific report we could do the same thing for other reports as well so that we can monitor those reports also so right now only the metering function is running that's why you are seeing a lot of reports there but if we i am going to make a simulation for the trip signal and i will also enable that report under that ied so to enable a report you need to browse to the view report option and enable it we could do the same thing for the other switch gear so that it can receive the signal through report also now all reports are enabled and we can see the signals being retrieved so when i make any changes here the corresponding entries are highlighted uh, under the report screen so i'll make a change for the circuit breaker status so that the corresponding report is also received so you could see that uh, the breaker status report has come and we could also see the current status of the circuit breaker here if you keep the mouse over the data point cell it will show the current values i'll make one more change and you could see that uh, the circuit breaker status is changed from open to close so this way you could monitor the functionality of a report from a client perspective and while the report is running you could see that the goose functionality is also running and if you browse to the point list you could see a data change received through different means so it could be through report it could be through goose or it could be through the polling so if certain reports uh, if certain data points are not available under certain um, uh, report or goose that can be polled in, and information can be retrieved so this is the summary of all these functions yeah i would like to also highlight the control function so let us uh, issue a control and see the data exchanges for that so control functionalities it's uh, done on the co functional constraint data objects and those objects can be identified using the co functional constraint here so i'll select uh, the position position has got certain data points here 
and if you click on a object which has got control data a dedicated tab for control will get populated otherwise you will only see a normal right or values kind of screens so that is identification of a control data object if you click on a control data object it will list down the options so in this case it is a direct operate and right now the circuit breaker position is close and if we change the status to open it will trigger a control command to the server and cause a data change there so i as a 6150 server is uh, pre configured to respond to the control messages so if any if it receives any control command it will mirror the control command value to the uh, the status value so we we should see a corresponding change in the status value here so let us trigger the control now the value is open and here value is close now let us trigger the control command so once control command is triggered the information goes to the device and comes back so now we can see that uh, the circuit breaker is open and reports are also received as part of the operation so if you browse to the thing you can see that it is a circuit breaker status as open now let us close the breaker and currently the value is off yeah now it has changed to close based on the control command i think we have covered almost all aspects of the tool but there are uh, many other features which uh, i couldn't cover during this demo but I, at a high level we have covered uh, you know basic features uh, and if you are interested you can uh, browse to the ac website and download the trial versions so if you download if you download the trial version you can activate a trial license and get it for us so if you browse to the respective link you will see ac 6150 suite downloads and you could download a cl manager the server and client from the from these links and you need to register in our website to get access to these downloads and we will provide you the trial versions based on the request we received from you and some of the features i have shown in the client are not available in the currently released tool those will be uh, available very soon so this is a version under development and uh, we are going to release it by end of q1 this year so with that uh, i am winding up the session and uh, we will look for the questions so one of the questions i have received is the applicability of sel manager in the current industry um, so the question is more uh, from a perspective of uh, a vendor tool based uh, SEL configuration. Uh, SEL tools are provided by original equipment manufacturers. What is the relevance of the SEL manager? Manager uh, is a vendor independent tool. It doesn't uh, have custom handling of a specific vendor anywhere in the tool. It purely works based on uh, the SEL standard. So advantages of using such a tool is that uh, if you want to extend uh, the same substation 
in future with the other manufacturer devices, then you will be able to do it easily if you use a vendor independent or vendor agnostic tool. And it, it is also a mechanism to verify the functions uh, supported by the IED. For example, um, if you want to verify the services supported by the IED, the tool will uh, show it clearly under services. So this way you can find out which all features are supported by the IED and you can you know, uh, get a good opinion about it. And a CL manager also focus on addition to based uh, signal mapping. So without uh, without a specific tool for the goose mapping and all, it is easy to find, it is easy to perform the mapping uh, of signals using the using this aid. So for example, so these are the signals exchanged between protection device and other IEDs. So these kind of views are easily uh, managed or easily handled by this tool. If you use vendor specific tool, it could be possible that uh, um, the signals exchanges with other devices are not handled properly or things like that. The next question is about the simulator. Uh, how real is the simulation? So that is the uh, question. Yeah, the simulator cannot simulate uh, all protection functions. Uh, it can only uh, work based on the uh, simulations configured by the user. So that's the limitation. But advantage is that you will be able to test all 650 aspects of uh, the uh, without the actual IED. So that's the advantage uh, we have. Uh, so without that real IED, if you want to test the client functions and uh, or if you want to see how the network is behaving uh, and things like that. So th th those are the aspects uh, which can be tested using a simulator. And in a lab, if you would like to simulate uh, a different manufacturer's configuration, sometimes it is get difficult to get the IEDs uh, into the lab. In that context, from a communication perspective, you can test GOOS as well as MMS communication uh, using the simulator. So next question is on the AC 61FT uh, client. Uh, the question is about the actual purpose of using this tool compared to other manufacturer tools. Uh, so AC 61FT is built uh, using a concept of point monitoring so the advantage of advantage for the operators or utility engineers is that if they want to see a specific data point uh, monitored properly uh, and get the history then those information will be easily accessible using this tool so that is the focus of uh, ac 615 ft client uh, compared to other tools in the market so yeah, I think uh, we have covered almost everything with respect to the demo. We went through the demo and saw the features as well. So I think, uh, yeah, I don't want to uh, extend this session further. We have already uh, reached one hour limit. So I think, yeah, I, I'm passing it on to Shreyas back. Thank you for joining us today, everyone. Please check out our other upcoming webinars we will be hosting. We'll also make these past available webinars for you to view. Uh, thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.